Hello YouTube. Sorry it's been a while since I made a video guys. Uh, today I want to be showing, I'm going to show you how to build a screensaver. Um, <clears throat> the concepts here though you can actually use in a lot of other things like on how to build um, a full screened menu or whatever it is that you're trying to build. This is probably a mid to interme intermediate to mid level developer uh, design concept. Uh, the design concepts that we're going to discuss today, we're going to talk about X and Y coordinates. Uh, we're going to talk about your true X, Y coordinate, and we're going to talk about the actual forms X, Y. If you're not familiar with this concept, I will go over it, uh, but you may need to uh, maybe look into a math book and maybe look at geometry or something uh, mathematically before you fully grasp the concept. So what we have here is I've already created our screensaver um, just the form itself. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys the properties real quick. Uh, there's nothing special about this. It doesn't do anything special. Uh, the one thing that it does do though is its center screen uh, and its window state is always maximized. Other than that it's really not doing anything super special. I've set the background image um, via using the resources. Now there are some things that you need to understand as well. Um, beyond the code. When you're making a screensaver, you need your executable and you need everything to be inside the executable itself. Um, primarily because you don't want to have external files uh, as to where you're building any other type of software, you're usually going to have your resources in an external folder uh, like files or something. Uh, in the case of a screensaver, you want to keep everything compiled so what you wanted to do, as many of you already know, is you just want to put it all in your resource folder. If you're not familiar with how your resource folder works, you may want to look at some beginner tutorials. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at the code here real quick. And I'll go ahead and explain this. Uh, what we have here is we have our variables, of course. Uh, we have our X close and our Y close. This is the button. As you can see, I've labeled this BTN, of course. Then we have our screen, and then we have our sound. These two options right here, you probably will not need these. Uh, this is actually our Ant Farms Gold Screen Saver, uh, and this is how I built it. I've actually posted this on the MSDN as well. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this though. But like I said, that you won't need button close or sound for your screen saver most likely, and you will probably want to do use a more traditional method where you use the mouse move event to exit the program as opposed to using a close button. Uh, anyway, alright, so what we have here, first thing is first. What you want to do to make this work for any screen is you want to capture, capture the user's primary screen working area. You want to capture their width and you want to capture the height. Uh, the width obviously goes left and right and their height goes up and down you need to capture those two variables right off the bat. It's the very first thing because that's going to set up everything else from this point forward. So I've called that X screen and I called that Y screen. And that's referring to the user screen itself. Like my monitor's resolution. Alright, that's very important that you understand, like I said, that there is a difference between this resolution or this size and the entire user's monitor size. So there are two factors that you need to consider uh, for your X and Y coordinates. Alright, so the next thing is the close button. Uh, what I've done here is I've set the close button uh, using their X screen, so their left and right, minus the button close width, so however wide this button is, plus 10. So I wanted to come over 10, just 10 spaces, or 10 pixels, uh, from the width, from starting all the way over here, at this point, I wanted to come over 10 pixels, so it'll probably be about right there, probably over a little bit closer to the top right, uh, but that's basically the concept right there, that's the math behind this little miniature formula, and for the Y, the Y just equals 10, so it just comes down 10. Alright, and then that's where you actually build that object. Now, 
for the fun part. You need to actually find the size of your form. So this is where we're going to find the size of the form. All right, so new drawing dot size equals X screen, Y screen. So what this is saying is currently my screen or my form is what, 284 by 262. So I need to tell, I need to stretch this out across the entire screen. So this is what this is doing. I'm setting the size, I'm, or I'm resizing my form to meet my X screen and my Y screen. Because remember, your X screen and your Y screen equal the user's primary width working area and their height working area. All right. Now, if you also keep in mind, if you have multiple screens, this is only going to capture one screen. This is capturing the primary screen, whatever you have set as the primary screen, or whatever the user has set as their primary screen. This is the only one that it'll capture. It won't actually go across multiple monitors. Uh, that would require a little bit more code. And most people are not going to have multiple monitors anyway. Uh, if you have multiple monitors, you're either working with really intense graphics um, or you probably just need to move out of your mom's basement. All right, so moving on. The background image. This is where I'm actually setting uh, the background image to use my resources or my resource that I put in there, which is the image. Now, this image is going to stretch because on my form, Go into the properties. I set the size to stretch. I didn't have to set that here, but this is just much easier than just writing it in code. Which, if you've used Visual Studio, you know there are lots of lovely little shortcuts that you can use. Uh, the next thing, even though I've already set the state to maximized, I want to ensure that it's going to go to maximized. And this is probably me just being paranoid, but I went ahead and put it in here as well. And that way I want to make sure that it maximizes. All right, and the last thing that we have here is we have our sound, which again, you don't need these. Um, these right here are just the extras I was telling you guys about that you don't have to have. I put sound in my screensaver, and I also set it to where you can turn the sound on and off. As you can see right here, we have this a quote unquote switch or the boolean that turns the sound on and off. Technically right here I could probably remove this if well this whole I could probably remove all of that but again I like to just you know have the else if instead of just an else and I know a lot of developers would you know probably criticize that and be like well you know you should never use else if unless you have three or more arguments so it's really up to you however you want to build it though at the end of the day nobody's going to see your source code except for you so it's really however you want to build it but anyway right here is the meat of the bones this is the important part and this is probably the most important part right here and that very simple formula uh, these two sections right here so this is how it works uh, let's see what it looks like when it actually runs so let's go ahead and debug I'm going to turn off the sound. It's really loud. All right, so that is what our screensaver looks like. Now, the next part, how do you actually get this to be a screensaver? Well, we all know this is going to save as an executable. If we go into our documents, Visual Studio, Projects, Go on our bin, debug. Now I just put the images here just for storage, but this file is actually not going to go. The only file we need is the executable. Uh, what you would do, you would just change this file extension to SCR. I believe that's the file extension. Let me check my Dropbox real quick. But I've already got it built. Yeah, SCR. Because right there is my screensaver. Pretty sure that was the file extension. So that's pretty much all you got to do to build the screensaver. Now, let me show you. Go back to my Dropbox real quick. 
let's say that I actually want to install this well what you need to do is you need to prompt your users to right click either configure or install that's how you're going to install it. You can actually install it using code as well if you want to build your own um, installer for it. Uh, but this is just the easiest way to explain it to a user how to install a screensaver that you've built. You can actually take any executable file that you've built and convert it to a screensaver. Now, the last question you're probably going to ask me, you know, say, oh, this is, you know, this is all great and dandy, but how is this going to help me with my Office applications? or how is this gonna help me with my games that I'm, or my entertainment based software that I'm designing? Well, it's really simple. Once you have the full screen or you can get the full screen or the primary, set the primary screen, you can do a lot of things. You can actually force the primary screen to change so you can resize the resolution uh, of their monitor temporarily. I would recommend that. I would store that value somewhere so you can change it back when your ex application exits. Uh, you can also run your games or your office equipment or whatever it is in full screen instead of having to use a windowed view where you have like the button up here to maximize, minimize, uh, which is really important because nobody wants this if you're designing a entertainment piece of software. Now, if you're designing a piece of office equipment, you probably really don't care. Uh, but it's still nice to know uh, because then you can start positioning things uh, more precisely like within your form you can also use uh, you could use a line like this you could use me dot client rectangle me dot client rectangle refers to the form itself I'm sorry, the form itself. I don't know what I said. Uh, the form itself. It refers to the form itself, so anything within the form, like it's adjusting the size of the form or whatever, whatever, uh, whatever object you want uh, to be placed specifically within the client itself or your rectangle, your form. But this, I personally, I recommend this method. Um, it's just a lot easier to position things uh, when you go full screen. And that's just my suggestion. Uh, anyway, this is how you do a screensaver. Please post uh, any comments that you have on how this works. And last but not least, I'll explain, briefly explain the difference between uh, your two X and Y coordinates between your resolution and your form. If I didn't explain that already, I'll go ahead and explain that real quickly. Uh, what you have here is your me dot client rectangle or your form has a different X and Y position than the user's screen position. All right. So just because you tell something that you know you need to go to this position, like let's look at this object real quick. Uh, let's look at its location. Okay. According to this object its position is 232 by 12 well I can just tell you right now I don't know where 12 exactly is on this monitor but I can tell you about 12 is probably about right there maybe right there on the project button that's about 12 pixels down so what I'm saying is is that the forums position and the users position are two separate values and this line of code right here matches those values up so they work you know so they're the same they're no longer different so when you're placing your objects they will actually be placed precisely where you want them to be uh, not just where the form says they should be placed now in reverse in certain circumstances you may want it to be true just to the form itself and you may not want it to be true to the users uh, resolution or their XY their screen so it's really it comes down to however you need it to be placed um, in a lot of cases when you start working on larger pieces of software you're gonna have to um, set that or you're gonna have to find that primary screen working area and this is the method that I recommend it's really simple it's very short sweet straight to the point 
All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, please subscribe, post your comments or, or questions. All right, thank you.